Yeah, well, this is Radio TV Phono Nut, and today we have a Zephyr little five tube AM radio from Japan. This looks like one of the earlier ones that was imported to the United States, probably late fifties, early sixties. All right, let's get the chassis out and see what we've got to work with. Okay, here's the chassis. It looks a little bit more substantial and feels a little bit more substantial than those little cheapo radios that you used to get at the dime store. And I like the fact that the speaker is permanently mounted to the chassis instead of mounted to the cabinet front. It makes it harder to service. Now let's look at the underside. And from what I see, it looks like all ceramic disc capacitors. So in that regard, it's an overall higher quality radio than the little cheap dime store models. Well, they say this thing plays great. I don't know. We're going to, we'll plug it up and see. All right, we're warming up. And we'll see what happens here in a minute. Well, that was interesting. Well, it actually does play, so they didn't lie about that. Well, I see one cap has been replaced, this across-the-line capacitor. Most likely the orig original one blew up and sent shrapnel everywhere. But I will take this out and put a safety cap in there just to be on the safe side. And we'll check this electrolytic. And then do a little cleaning of the tube sockets and the volume control, and that'll probably all be all that needs to be done to this set. Now, this is one of the few Japanese components from this era that I've seen with what appears to be a date code. And this filter capacitor is date coded the seventh week of 1959, so since it was made so early in 59, we can assume this radio is was probably made in 1959, so yeah, this is a pretty early Japanese import. Okay, this green cap they had across the power line is a .047 microfarad at 630 volts, and this is not a very old capacitor, judging by how it's marked, so this radio has been worked on in the not too distant past, I'd say probably within the past 30 years, I'd say. But just to be on the safe side, even though this capacitor is superior to what was in there originally, we're going to go ahead and change it with a AC rated safety capacitor that's designed not to not to blow up. Okay, here's our across the line capacitor replaced, and to facilitate doing that, I had to remove the wire from this terminal of the power switch and also the coupling capacitor for the volume control. That just made it easier for me to get in here and do it without hitting any of these other wires and melting them. So now we'll put those items back. Okay, I pulled the electrolytic capacitor and it still checks perfectly fine. But like I've said before, I've seen these Japanese capacitors fail, but not not very often. They seem to hold up a lot better than than you think they would, but you know, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put a terminal strip here on the front. We're going to put a couple of new ones in here just to make everybody happy. And since this chassis is ground, in other words, the hot chassis set, I can use a I can use a three lug terminal strip with the center lug being the common to the chassis, and that'll make things a lot simpler. That's one advantage to having a chassis that's connected to one side of the AC line and of course we'll have to extend some of these wires well what we'll do we'll just replace them with longer wires and make it look neat all right here's our new filter network ready to be attached to the chassis uh, we're getting rid of this big green 2k resistor that's drifted up to 2.8k and I'm replacing it with a modern 2.2k ohm 2 watt resistor even though it looks like a half watt but they say it's 2 watt that's all I've got to go on 
and then that'll look nice and neat. All we have to do is solder it to the chassis and then replace our wires that are too short with ones that are long enough to reach this terminal strip and it'll be done. Here we are physically in place and I think it's about time to go eat lunch so I'll go do that and probably give the dog a bath. He needs one and then we'll come back down and take care of the wiring of this little thing here. Okay, through the magic of the camera it's all taken care of, or at least I hope it is. Here's our two new filter capacitors and our resistor here. Uh, we had to replace some of the existing wires with new hookup wire because the existing wires were not long enough to run around and stretch over here to go where we needed them to go. So we took care of that. Uh, this cathode bias resistor for the output tube I thought the schematic said 120 ohms. It was the schematic was kind of damaged in that area. When I measured the resistor, it read close to 200 ohms. So I said, "Well, that one's got to go." Then once I got the resistor out, it was supposed to be 180 ohms. So I didn't try to put it back in there. In fact, it made it easier for me just to use a new 150 ohm resistor. That that will still work. In fact, 150 is generally the standard value for this application. So we just attached our new cathode bypass capacitor to that resistor and connected it in the circuit here. Uh, this lead coming off of the volume control, I had to remove it to make it easier to access down here where I needed to solder. And the old wire was in kind of bad shape and was on the verge of breaking off, so I just replaced it with a fresh new piece of hookup wire. And this wire, this cheap quality wire that they use, is not that great. In fact, over the years, with all the heat generated at the tube socket pins, that wire will disintegrate at the connection and just burn off there. In fact, the original wire running from the cathode of the output tube over to this filter capacitor can was one such wire. I just barely touched it and it broke off of the uh, tube socket terminal, which is no big deal because we were going to remove it anyway. Due to today's smaller components, it lets us put the uh, resistor and capacitor right here at the tube socket. No, no need in running it all the way over here. All right, let's put the power cord back on it and juice it and, and see if it works better or worse or about the same or are we going to have a fire show or... Well, unfortunately, now it's worse. Now all I'm hearing is just a faint buzz in the speaker and that's it. So what happened? What did I do to it? Or what failed? Or Well, these things, it could be any number of reasons. All right, when I touch the center terminal of the volume control, I should get a buzz in the speaker if the amplifier is working, and that's not happening, so we need to troubleshoot that area, starting at the 12AV6 and working our way through to the 50C5 output tube. Like, those are okay, big dudes, right? Big found the problem, and it all goes back to what I've already said about how fragile these can be. That green resistor, that's your plate load resistor to the uh, for the uh, 12AV6 or 12AT6, whatever it is, they're one in the same tube. I first discovered that we had no plate voltage on that tube, so I moved my meter back to the other end of that resistor at the junction where you see the red wire and the resistor and some more things there. Touched my meter probe on there and it started playing. It came to life, so we need to redo that connection. In fact, looking at this through the enlarged view on the camera viewfinder, that doesn't look too good, so we're going to have to have to redo that. All right, see right here, if I can get my screwdriver in here, you see that's just, it's not even soldered. It's just barely making contact there. And this looks like one of those deals where they used a continuous piece of a hookup wire, ran it through all the places where they wanted to solder to, and then melted the insulation off where they wanted to solder and then soldered it in place. 
So I'm just going to simply re-solder this back and it ought to be good to go. Okay, there it is, soldered back and good. No more wiggle wiggle. So it ought to play and continue to play this. And another thing I did, someone had an external antenna connection attached to this set with no type of isolation. And that's not a good idea when uh, you're dealing with a hot chassis radio. In fact, if you look at the power plug here, you can see where somebody put a speck of white paint on the one side of it. That's so they would know which way to orient the plug into the wall outlet so the chassis wouldn't be hot. I figure they probably either had sparks fly or got the crap knocked out of them at some point in time, so that's why they did that. Okay, this is pathetic. This is really pathetic. Two different stations. This one running sports. And the other low-powered sports station running sports. The same dadgum sports program. Now how uh, uninventive is that? You would think the other one, the other station, could find something else that one of their competitors is not running. That's our station about 90 miles away, so that's pretty good, pretty impressive. Better than you are right now, or maybe even as good as you are right now. Okay, you'll get... Now, we'll give them a couple of things. At least this rear apron, the chassis mounting apron, is isolated from the uh, main chassis, so this piece is not hot. And they did wire the... Uh, power switch in the hot side of the line so it would make it easy to put a polarized cord on here if someone so desired. Now, even though this chassis will stay in here without it, I guess the next thing we would need to do would be to try to epoxy something on this missing chipped out piece here on the bottom so we could utilize our other chassis mounting bolt but that's not something that has to be done right now. <laughs> It's not Derrick Henry's fault. But there's a day that's gone gone. Having a great game. If he had a very good game and they're non competitive, he choked. Great game. Welcome home. For running back, Doug, we have the greatest effect on. on. Look at the league leading rush. Out of what we got, the Southern Gospel Station is about the only one that I can even stand to listen to. But even at that, I would still like to have more variety on AM, like an oldie station or a classic country station or a standard station like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. But that'll probably never happen here. Right? He's had a hamstring problem as well. Like the Raiders, Josh Jacobs is a stud. Josh Jacobs is third in the NFL. All right, there you go. It's working. Now, how long it'll work is anybody's guess, but right now it's working.